Farms.com Market School with expert commodity analyst Mo Agostino is an online educational video series designed to help you, the farmer, improve your knowledge of grain marketing. Farms.com Market School is brought to you by DeKalb Brand Seeds, DeKalb Growing Confidence. Today's video is about international markets, who are the largest producers in the world, who are the biggest exporters and importers, and we're also going to look at geopolitical risks and what impact they can have on your grain prices. We'll review the past and get some insight into what the future may bring. Our topics today include largest grain producing countries in the world, key grain exporting and importing countries, why that matters, and then we'll look at some examples through geopolitical risks. Let's start off with uh, who is the largest grain, which country is the largest grain producing country in the world. Let's start off with corn. U.S. is the largest. Um, they plant about 90 plus million acres of corn or 35 percent of global production. China comes in on in second but corn usage is mostly used for local consumption and feed. The largest soybean producer in fact is the U.S. but Brazil is catching up pretty fast. U.S. plants about 77 plus million acres in any given year. Um, U.S. is important but one cannot ignore South America. Brazil, you can see in this chart, has caught up to the United States and depending on uh, the next few years, it's probably gonna surpass the US. Argentina now producing about 70 plus million metric tons in soybeans, so Brazil probably rank one or two depending on uh, which year we're talking about. Uh, uh, but uh, currently in that 90 million metric tons in global soybean production, Argentina ranked number three at 70 million metric tons. In fact, combined Argentina uh, and uh, Brazil soybean production, they surpassed the United States at 145 million metric tons. So any weather and production issues in South America can play a big role in the future price direction of soybeans. Who is the largest wheat producer in the world? It's the European Union. They produce about 130 million metric tons. It's followed closely by China and then the U.S. in fourth. Our next topic is about the largest importers and exporters of grain around the world. Let's start off with corn. The largest uh, exporter of corn is the United States. 30% of all U.S. corn is exported to Japan, South Korea, and Mexico are ranked number two and three for the top destinations of, of, of exports of corn. Exports get a lot of press and attention, but only still represent a small piece of the U.S balance sheet or pie at 12% compared to feed, ethanol and food, industrial usage. The largest exporter of soybeans is Brazil with the United States coming in second, uh, Argentina third. 70% of all U.S. soybeans are exported to China with Japan ranked number two. Uh, China is still the top destination for U.S. agriculture exports, um, up five-fold in five years. Uh, China also a top destination for soybeans as well as, as Brazilian and Argentine soybeans. China is the wild card with 1.35 billion people and 600 million hogs, 50% of global production. They will continue to demand more food feed as incomes rise over time. The largest import and exporter in the world is, on wheat is the United States, uh, followed by Australia, Canada, in the European Union. Uh, typically the largest importer of wheat is the Middle East or Egypt. Our last topic today talks about global geopolitical risks. Our first example is the 2010-11 European debt crisis. I don't know if anybody remembers that but uh, we were talking about it for some time and uh, it began in 2010 the world started worrying about the, the debt crisis in Europe. It started with Greece, then it spread to Ireland, Spain, Italy. And you can see from this chart, the euro dollar fell hard to about 120 support in very quick order. This sent Europe falling into a recession, increasing fears that a global recovery would be jeopardized, which followed by increased volatility. The stock market in 2011 fell. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 18% in quick order very short order on that fear. Uh, it also spilled over into the corn market. Corn market fell about 26.9% in the fall of 2011 on that fear. Another good example is the 2011 unrest in the Middle East. Uh, 
Uh, it started uh, with civilian unrest in Tunisia, spread to Egypt and Libya, increased fears that this unrest may spread to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, why? Uh, well, it controls most of the crude oil reserves in the world. It controls a big chunk of production that's being shipped outside of the OPEC nations as much as 30 percent once again increasing fears that a global economic recovery will slow down thus increasing volatility once again as crude oil prices shoot up to uh, to um, incredible highs of 115 per barrel uh, another example would be the 2011 japanese earthquake tsunami and nuclear uh, meltdown disaster 9.0 magnitude earthquake creates havoc in northern Japan followed by a tsunami that created a disaster. However, out of 130 million Japanese inhabitants, most escaped without harm. The nuclear disaster um, increased fears as well. Uh, many were uh, remembering the Russian Chernobyl as radiation levels were rising and spreading to other countries. Initial reaction was panic selling, risk for appetite was lowered, and again, causing increased volatility. And this is the volatility index. And you can see in the fall of 2011, it jumped considerably. Uh, in fact, the US dollar also jumped 7.4% in one month as investors flocked to safety. So when you get fear about a geopolitical risk, uh, many investors will flock to the U.S. dollar as that safety because it's that global U.S. reserve currency. So in summary, knowing which country produces what and where it all goes, as well as watching global events and macroeconomic geopolitical factors outside of North America can have a large impact on your grain prices and volatility. Production issues and geopolitical global events can create many short-term swings and uncertainties. When fear is at its highest, do nothing. No need to panic. Understanding and knowing what impact these events can have on economies, investor sentiment, and grain prices is very important for your grain marketing plan. Thank you for spending some time with us today, and we hope that we've shed some light and insight on international markets, exports, imports, and geopolitical risks, and how you can use this information to become a more successful marketer. Until next time, thanks for watching.